check this out. The troop scared the hell out of me and I couldn't put it down. This is old school horror at its best. Not for the faint hearted, but for the rest of us sick puppies. It's a perfect gift for a winter night. Stephen King. Hey everybody, it's your girl Tanya with Books and Brown Liquor and I am back with another book review. I have been waiting to do this book review. I finally read The Troop by Nick Cutter. O-M-G. Okay, I've been dying to talk about this book. I finally read The Troop, yay! Okay, before I even get into it, before I even get into the book, on the very front cover of the book, there is a little excerpt by Stephen King <clears throat> in which Stephen King says, this book is dark and deeply disturbing. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Stephen King said a book is dark and deeply disturbing. The man that brought you it, the man that brought you misery, the man that brought you all these creepy ass stories, if he says something is deeply disturbing, believe him, okay? I, I truly believe Stephen King is the reason people are afraid of clowns now because before, before it, I wasn't afraid of clowns. And because of it, till this day, I am afraid of walking past a storm drain. I literally cannot walk past a storm drain without thinking about what happened to Georgie. Like in my mind, when I walk past a storm drain, I think that fool is down there. So furthermore, one Stephen King, a few years back, I read Under the Dome, where <laughs> when the stuff starts going down, a cow is literally split down the middle, like cut in half, like lengthwise, cut in, like, and all your slasher movie horror, right? And then in that same book, there was a character who killed two women and locked their bodies in the pantry and <laughs> engaged in sexual acts with these two corpses that were rotting in his home, also known as necrophilia. Yeah, that's a thing. I'm not making that up. That's a thing. So for the man that brought you all this creepy shit, including necrophilia, for him to say that something is deeply disturbing, first of all, what you talking about, Willis? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, reader discretion is advised. That's all I'm going to say. Everybody kept saying, this book is gross. This book made me sick to my stomach. I couldn't take it. It was so disgusting. So I went in like, okay. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I'm ready. Bruh. <laughs> so the troop takes place on Prince Edward Island, the island of Falstaff, but it's Prince Edward Island, Canada, also known as where story Anne of Green Gables took place. And they actually do reference that in the book. Just had to mention that because that was my favorite book as a kid. Anyways, uh, you got five Boy Scouts and their leader, uh, Scout Master Tim, who is also a doctor of like the small town that they live in. Everything is going fine. Uh, they're going on this, this trip over the weekend. It's an, uh, they have to take a boat. So it's like a very isolated emphasis on isolated from like the town. Okay. So they are all alone. So they think on this Island. And I will just say this book is a prime example of when science goes wrong, okay? You know how scientists, they be trying to uh, create a cure for something and they end up creating some shit that kills you? Hint, hint, okay? So all is going fine. They're alone. They're about to, you know, make some fires, eat some food, go hiking and all of this jazz. But change of plans. What they don't know is, number one, they're not alone on the island. Okay. And all I'm saying is everybody don't make it home for Christmas. Okay. So is it disgusting? Yeah, it's really disgusting. It's fucking gross. Okay. Um, I did hear people mention they had a hard time with animal cruelty. Uh, mind you, 
I didn't have a hard time with that. It was disgusting, but it's a work of fiction. So I wasn't like, oh my God, I can't read any further. No, I was fine. Um, but it is very descriptive in the gore, the gory detail of the things that happen to their around them, the things that happen to the bodies, the things that happen to them individually and mentally. Because obviously like when you're in a dark, dangerous situation and you don't know if you're gonna make it out, that does things to the psyche, okay? And all five boys have very different personalities. So they all handle this situation different, okay? Uh, I will say this book is like Lord of the Flies meets Contagion. Think Contagion meets Lord of the Flies. You got young boys, uh, hyper adrenaline pumping. You know, you don't really, they, they, they grasp the reality of the situation that they are in. But one thing about youth is they always feel like no matter what the circumstances, they, 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 the hope doesn't die, no matter how dire everything is around them, okay? So yeah, Contagion, all right? I really can't say too much about the threat because whenever you think of a scary movie or a scary book, you always think of, the threat is usually like another person yielding a weapon or like a supernatural type of thing. But the threat on this island is biological. You know what I mean? So it's like, you can't really pinpoint a bad guy. Like, it's hard to run away when there's not really a bad guy. The threat is biological. Okay, that's all I can say. But like I said, uh, this is basically when science goes wrong. Okay, uh, there are scientists that have created something. Okay, and it went awry and somehow it got loose. And these boys are all alone to deal with it. The boys and their scoutmaster are all alone to deal with this shit that has hit the fan, okay? It's like, like I said, scientists, when they do their job correctly, it's great. You know, I enjoy coal medicine, um, you know, gr different things that have helped me. But you know how like, you see those commercials for like, oh, cure your diabetes with fill in the blank type pill. And then like, Two years later, you're watching TV and the commercial says, oh, may cause fatalities. What? I'd rather have diabetes, motherfucker. So anyway, so this is kind of like that. Science has gone wrong. Science has failed this community. Okay, science has failed this community. That's all I'm gonna say. So yes, definitely biological. So it's hard to pinpoint the bad guy. Another thing I wanna talk about is the characters. You got five young men. They're like, what, 14 years old. And they're trying to figure out how to deal with this situation, right? So you got like, you know, you got your hero, you got your tough guy, you got the nerd that gets picked on. You basically have every stereotypical trope of a young adolescent boy, right? What I will say is when things start getting bleak, some of their characters start to you know how they say, uh, you never know what someone is made of until they are in a catastrophe, or you never know someone's true character until they're in a, an emergency. That's all I'm gonna say. Because like amongst these boys, there's a weirdo, all right? And he's like, <laughs> I don't wanna give it away, but like, this is not the time for you to practice being a fucking weirdo. Like, I'm just saying, so being isolated, uh, and thinking that you're gonna die, help is not coming. Cause hell no, help definitely ain't coming. But uh, it does some things to their psyche, okay? Anyways, I enjoyed this story. I really enjoyed Nick Cutter's writing. I think his writing is very descriptive. He tells a really good tale. Really, really good. It's really detailed. I actually learned some scientific words. I was reading this like, yo, I had to, I had to Google like four words. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Anyway. Uh, the writing is very good, very detailed. Uh, 
And the thing is, very detailed even when it comes to the disgusting things. So he'll tell you about a wound that is gaping profusely and I understand that's not for everybody. I understand that uh, it's a bit graphic, but it wasn't too much for me. I am a huge Stephen King fan, so I pretty much think I am desensitized, but I'm not gonna lie. There were some parts where I was like, ooh, ugh, okay. And I'm like, if they ever make a movie of this, <laughs> it's gonna be so disgusting. But anyway, uh, I enjoyed this. I liked it. I wasn't turned off by the gore, but uh, it's definitely horrifying. It is definitely a horrifying situation. Uh, so Nick Cutter, he did that, okay? I enjoyed this very much and I do recommend it. This is like a 4.5 for me. This is definitely a 4.5. Uh, I will definitely check out some of his other work. Yes, I recommend it. But like I said, reader discretion is advised. If you are turned off by gory details, this is not your book. Real talk, this is not your book. But other than that, if anyone else read it, please share your thoughts. And uh, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you good reading. And if you have any recommendations of other creepy, crawly, <laughs> uh, any other recommendations for me, I'm here for it. So thank you for watching. I wish you good reading. Bye.